Hello and welcome back to the Bessemer and Lake Erie and HO scale. I'm Ray Brown. And I uh, haven't done an update in a while. And if you've been following the channel, it might look like I've gotten a lot done or might look like I've gotten very little done, depending if you know how much work goes into these things. So I have two projects going at once right now, and both are things I've never done before. So one is building the entire yard ladder hand laid in place. I've built tons of switches using the fast track jigs, but I've never just built them air quote freehand here. But uh, it's going real well. This is Code 70 Micro Engineering Rail. Uh, I'm down to the last switch to build here in the Conneaut arrival yard. So thinking this this is the arrival yard going on this way. And then once you branch off at that switch and go that way, that's the that's the departure with some caboose and engine tracks there in the background. Um, so I've I've laser cut all these ties myself. Um, and yeah, just laying the rail in place. I want to use the Central Valley ties uh, under all, all the rails here, but this is all one one continuous rail. So like, you know, other than the isolation gap from the frog, that rail going that way is all one piece. So I'm trying to do this to keep it as smooth as possible. And I think, I think I'm having some luck. It all seems quite smooth. Um, just using the little three point track gauges to keep everything built. And of course all the fast tracks, jigs. Um, and I've been pretty much doing the switch motor work as I go, hence the rod in here. And this is a uh, weld wire. And I made myself just some little, there it is, laser cut switch mounts. So, all the frogs are powered uh, up till here, so I'm kind of putting the switch motors in as I go. So, I gotta tell you, I think it takes as much time to put the switch motor in as it does to, um, as it does to um, actually build the switch. that figures I have the power turned off to the, the yard there here so we can't go very far here but, you know so far so good These are all number six switches. Um, and yeah, going uh, going pretty good. Definitely having, having some fun building this. So I'll finish, I'll finish getting the arrival switch here done. And then maybe I'll do one on the departure side. And then I want to flip over and do the other end uh, in North Bessemer, so I can kind of have at least, you know, four or five through tracks going, and that might let me start to think about having an op session. And then I'll build the back half as we go. Um, give a shout out to uh, Drew at uh, White River Line. Um, I think that's what it's called. It's um, based on the Frisco and the Ozarks, I think is his, his tagline. But I watched him build a yard ladder, and I copied some of his techniques. Um, it was definitely insightful, and thanks to Drew for putting that video together because it gave me the courage, I guess, to go ahead and try this. Um, but I did do a few notable things different, and this is probably just the, the manufacturing guy coming out in me. But uh, in his video, he started talking a lot about starting with the frogs and then letting the frogs dictate where everything else was. And that just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, in the machining world, we always, we have something we call a datum, uh, which is, you know, 
a surface or a reference point that all other features are based off of. And it didn't make sense for me for frogs to be the datum when they're disjointed, they're not connected. Um, so I made the stock rail going down the length of the ladder be my datum. So I laid it first and I got it straight with a laser. And then I based everything else off of that stock rail. And I didn't have any problems making that work. So uh, definitely not saying that starting with the frog is a bad way to do it. Uh, it certainly worked for Drew and I'm sure lots of other people. Uh, but uh, it didn't make sense to me. I tried doing something different and this worked just fine too. Uh, which makes me think there's probably tons of ways you could make this work. So that is progress on the yard ladder. Keep building this out a little bit at a time. As you can imagine, this is it's very fun work. It's very satisfying work, but it's very tedious work. Uh, and I can only stand to do a little bit of it at a time. So, let's go and see the other project that I've never done before. And is tedious, and I can only stand to do a little bit of it at a time. <laughs> and that would be the Helix. So, I am on, like, revision 20 of how I was going to build this thing, but I think I got the method I'm going to use now. So my plan was to copy a guy in my model railroad club, Jerry Jordak, uh, is building a, a helix a similar size, and he did 3 8 ply, and he lapped it, so it became 3 quarter thick ply, but, you know, the sections were split, so the joints were all offset. And he did it all with threaded rod, and that made so much sense to me. And when I went to try to do it, I just, I tore my hair out. I could not make it work. And why I couldn't make it work was because the plywood was so warped that between the thread sections, it was just doing this like crazy. And I had thought that when I screwed the two three-eight sections together, that they would just sort of flatten each other out. And that was that was just total wishful thinking. It, that did not work. Uh, so what I did was I went and there's a board, oh, focus, there we go, going all the way across radially, um, about every 10 degrees or so. And every one is just slightly taller than the one before it. I ripped them all on my table saw and then just screwed them into the base from underneath, screwed the top pieces down, and all that went completely fine. This is all extremely solid. I mean, I can probably stand on this. Um, and I got a nice smooth rise. So now I'm just going to start putting in the 3 and 5 eighths inch wood blocks like you see a lot of people do. Uh, and I'm doing that because I can get a lot more consistent uh, support rather than discrete points. So that's going to work for me. Something that I'd had in my head for a long time was thinking about how these tracks were going to wind into the helix. And that uh, came out just the way I thought it would. And I left one support there not painted with the date on it. Um, just because it'll all be hidden eventually. And I thought if I ever ran a camera car through or something, it be, might be kind of neat to remind myself the date uh, that that got built. Um, so anyway, all going pretty good. And the way I'm, I'm just uh, fastening the track, I got this from uh, oh, Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Uh, these are number four flathead screws and a number eight washer. And it uh, works real good. Um, so you can probably, if you've never been able to understand my ramblings, how this is going to work. So this is the first lap of the Helix built. Once the second lap of the Helix is built, it will be another four inches higher. And the end of the KO line will come across on a bridge. That bridge in that picture. Bridge will come across and jump into the Helix on the second ramp. So it'll be a four tracks Helix uh, once uh, it gets up a little further. But uh, let's go ahead and, and give it a try. I have not cleaned the track yet here, so... Uh, 
bear with me if this doesn't go real well. And um, I'm going to go on the inside track, which is the toughest. It's the steepest incline and the sharpest turn. And uh, this is one of my lighter locomotives, the AS616. And uh, what I've kind of designed the layout for is a single locomotive in 12 cars would be a, a maximum scenario. And there we go, ducking in. And of course, this will be the Erie Crossing at XN and Shenango. is definitely working but it's it's gonna make it all right and um, quick word I see a lot of people do a lot of really crazy things trying to get all the measurements in their helix and I definitely started trying to do things the hard way I just pulled out my one foot level. My one foot level has uh, tick marks in here for uh, grade, and the second line there is for quarter inch a foot. And that's just about what I tried to land on quarter inch a foot, uh, which works out to be about 2%. 0.24 of an inch would be exactly 2%. Uh, 0 0.25 is pretty darn close. So, looks like the local made it up just fine. Let's go ahead and see something with a little bit more magnitude. Of course, if you've been watching the channel, you've seen trains take the turnout right there, which in operation, once the whole layout's built, will just be the connector with the Erie Railroad. I'm not actually used, but I can use it just to loop the first deck. So this will be the normal path of trains. And this train would be just leaving the Allegheny Industrial District. We'll head up the Helix and into Butler on the second deck. I just think, I just think that's really cool. My intent was to hide that kind of take this backdrop straight across to not screw the scene at XN. But it's just so cool. I might just leave it. Here's my Atherin Genesis set with TCS WoW. Again, no problem with the helix. But let's do a real torture test. What about one steam locomotive and a pretty substantial train? For those of you with real sharp eyes, I use Atlas Code 83 for all my mainline track. I'm using the Atlas Code 100 in the Helix. It's a little cheaper and uh, can take a little bit more punishment of imperfection. That's that. So, um, definitely some work coming along here. Pretty happy with how it's coming together. 
And, uh, you know, really important I get these things right. Um, so we'll keep building the helix here and uh, in the yard ladder and hopefully get on to the second deck before uh, too much time gets by here. I'm definitely looking forward to that. And um, I debated if I was going to say anything or not. Um, I follow a lot of guys on YouTube. Uh, you know, some really talented modelers out there that have really inspired me a lot. And um, I'm not going to say anything negative. Um, but I will say that... I absolutely promise anyone watching this channel that I will never in any way ask for money uh, from any of you watching this. I, I think it's ridiculous. Um, and um, it, it feels uh, dirty to me to even think about uh, uh, putting my hand out there for anything. So if you're a content provider, uh, I thank you for your videos. Um, I know I have a lot of fun making these. I have a lot of fun sharing them. And, um, yeah, last thing I want to do is, uh, put my hand out for dollars. So, um, here's my, uh, my Facebook promise, uh, keeping the channel free here. Um, anyway, that's all I have to say on that subject. I think you get the point. So... Uh, one other thing I will add is uh, playing with the laser. I um, I did figure out the best way to cut ties, and that was I made this silly little fixture out of a, out of a piece of glass, and I just glued on some pieces so I can just slide a piece of uh, material in there and it holds it down kind of flat on the glass, and it cuts way better like this. Um, so anybody with a laser cutter out there, probably not a lot of you, but maybe somebody. Um, that uh that really really helped me a lot i mean a lot a lot excuse me um very first burn i did turned out so clean uh comparatively and actually um this is something i made myself right here this is going to be my circuit breaker control for uh for the helix actually i figured i better put the helix on its own set of circuit breakers since i expect the engines to be working pretty hard um and I actually drew this in um, a PowerPoint and just saved it as a PDF and burned it out. Um, so, pretty fun. All right. Um, hopefully I'll be a bit better and more regular with uh, updates here uh, going into winter. But um, got some other exciting news I'll be uh, looking forward to share with you guys next time. Um, but I think that's all for today. Bye for now.